Okay, yesterday we had choir rehearsal, but now we can sing it for real. Come on, help us sing this song. Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd, everybody. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. I've been practicing. I won't fear. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. Thank you, Jesus. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. Jesus right there. He always guides me. He always guides me. <laughs> Through mountains and valleys. Through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is
one more time.
Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our God is bigger than anything this morning. And so as we come into his presence this morning to bring glory, to give glory, to exalt his name, to lift him up, he's bigger than anything. He is the great God, the one whom we worship, the one whom we adore, the one whom we praise, the one whom we lift up. Hallelujah. David said, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, as we come this morning to lift up the name of Jesus, I implore you in your own space, in your living room, in your car, in your bedroom, wherever you are this morning, open your hearts and receive and declare this morning that God is bigger. God has exalted himself. God continues to exalt himself. Hallelujah. 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 And so this morning, we are indeed blessed to be in the house of the Lord. And so we're going to have our praise team to come to us this morning with their selection. the works of man. You are the only God. There is none like you. All other gods, they are the works of man. You are the only God. There is none like you. Jehovah, you Jehovah, you are the most high God. You are the most high. Hallelujah. We call him Elohim. We call him Adonai. Hallelujah. We call him Jehovah Jireh. We call him Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. 
is our peace. Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. You are the most high God. Hallelujah. All other gods, they are the works of men. But this morning we can truly say indeed that Jehovah is the most high God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have our own prayer done by Sister Iseto. Uh, let's go to the throne of God. Most high God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor for this time, oh God, that we're able to share with each other, oh God, and to glorify you and to praise your name. We thank you, God, for waking up this morning and for providing the space for our worship, oh Father God. We thank you, God, for movement in our limbs and clothes on our backs and food on our table and roof over our heads, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for everything you have done for us, oh God. And Father, we ask that you will forgive us of our trespasses, oh God, as we will forgive those that trespass against us. Father God, we ask that you will have your way in this service today, oh Father God. I ask, oh God, that your anointing will fall in each and every listener, oh God, on whatever medium, oh Father God. We ask, oh God, that you will anoint the speaker, oh God, the persons taking part in the service, oh God. We ask for a fresh anointing, oh God. And we ask, oh God, that you will open our hearts and our minds, oh God, to hear from heaven, oh God. Because you said where two or three are gathered, oh God, there you are in the midst. And Father God, we know we're more than two and three this morning. So Father God, we ask that your Holy Spirit will indwell each and every one of us, dear Father. Have your way, Lord. I ask all these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's my job this morning to welcome you, all of you who are worshiping with us this morning. And uh, wherever, whichever platform you're on this morning, we welcome you. We, we pray that um, your day, as you're joining us this morning, is blessed, that uh, you get what you came for. And so on behalf of Pastor Kenesha Blake Newell, the ministerial team, and all the members and officials of this great Zion, we pray that you'd have a blessed time in the Lord and uh, enjoy the service, God. May God continue to bless you and, and highly keep you highly favored. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the reading of the scripture done by Cecilia Blackwood. Good morning. The scripture for today is taken from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 5, 17 to 32. Acts chapter 5, 17 to 32. Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is a sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and thought. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing out, outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. And when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the, and the chief priests heard of these things, they wondered what the outcome will be. So one came and told them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went and sorry, then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people least they should be stoned. And when they heard, and when they had brought, brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest asked them, saying, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man blood upon us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our father raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalt, exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witness of these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Here, Henry Raiden. Thank you, Sister Nelly. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions about tomorrow. There have been times when I didn't know right from wrong. 
God in every situation, God give blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. Jesus through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to depend upon his word hallelujah hallelujah we worship you this morning God through it all God we have learned to trust in you God and even if we have not learned it by now God through it all we can depend upon you we can trust in you, oh God. If we never have a problem, how can we know that God could solve them? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel a praise just coming on this morning. God is worthy to be praised, hallelujah. His name is worthy to be praised, hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah, we thank you, we bless you. We lift you up, oh God. We place you at the highest place. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. We give you the honor. Mighty God of Daniel, we call on you, Abba Father, for you are great and you're mighty and you're powerful. Through it all, God, we call upon you this morning. We have learned to trust in you, God. We will learn to depend upon your words this morning. Through it all, God, you have proven that you are the only constant friend. You have proven that you are the only one who doesn't change. Yes, God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor this morning. Hallelujah. We place you higher above all others. No other God can compare to you, God. You are the God of yesterday, today, and forever will be God. Mighty God, 
God of Daniel, you reign in majesty. The God of Jacob, the Lord our God is our refuge. David said, who is like unto our God? There is none like unto him. And so God, I exalt you this morning. God, I praise you. God, I magnify your name this morning. God Almighty, you are glorified in this place this morning. Hallelujah. We bless you this morning, God. We exalt you this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Our praises is not determined uh, by what others do, God, but because when we think uh, of the goodness of Almighty God, uh, David said, the songwriter said, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving grace. Uh, when I think of the goodness of God, uh, my soul cannot remain quiet uh, because God, God has been faithful. God has been good to his church. God has been good to his people. And because of that this morning, we exalt you at the highest place this morning. Hallelujah. His name is worthy to be praised, brothers and sisters. His name is worthy to be exalted. We have been found lacking and wanting, but God has been found abundant in his mercies and his goodness and his grace. And that's enough reason to give him praise this morning. That's enough reason to lift him up this morning. That's enough reason to put everything aside this morning and just give Abba Father the highest praise this morning. Hallelujah. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to depend upon his word. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, some trust in their friends, some trust in their, in their loved ones, some trust in their jobs, some trust in their material things, but we will put our trust in almighty God. Hallelujah. Glory be to his name this morning. I endorse the welcome given to all by Reverend Willis this morning. If you're joining us, welcome. If you're listening in, welcome. May the Lord bless you abundantly. May you pour into your heart and may you receive what God has in store for you this morning. I want to sh share a word that God has laid on my heart. I want you to give me at least 10 minutes of your time to share what God has laid on my heart for the people of God this morning. And it comes to us from the passage that was read by Sister Merle, um, Acts 5, 17 to 32. My topic to you this morning is God has exalted himself. As I read the scripture and I read it over and over again, the thing that stood out to me was God has exalted himself. And I read it again and it, 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 it connected so powerfully, God has exalted himself. Tell my people, God has exalted himself. He has proven himself invincible, the undefeatable God. He has proven himself the infinite. He's at work in all of us. Paul wrote to the Philippians, and he spoke of the character of Jesus Christ somewhere in the verses in Philippians 2, verse 10, I believe. He says, therefore, God has exalted him, his son, Jesus, to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. My brothers and sisters, to exalt is to give or raise someone or something to the highest of heights, emphasizing their absolute power that nothing is above that person or that thing. God has exalted himself. 
God has raised himself to the position of the highest of highest. Uh, and we see it in this miracle as we will proceed to look at it. Uh, God has elevated himself to a position of praise and adoration. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, that if we refuse to praise him, uh, that doesn't stop God from being exalted. Uh, because if he sees his fit, uh, he will rise up the chairs and the stones and the trees uh, and his creation to give him praise. And so my word to you this morning, you can keep your praise. You can keep your adoration. You can keep your worship because God is still exalted this morning. God is exalted. One of the key lessons from the scripture that I want to share with us is that we see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit being exalted in this scripture. Can I say that God uses as he see fit when we avail ourselves to him. He uses his vessels, his creations. Once we avail ourselves to exalt himself, God uses this prison experience to exalt himself. God uses in the scripture the works of the devil and the evil one to exalt himself. God uses his creations to exalt himself. As the church in Jerusalem was growing, the Bible tells us at the start of Acts that the church was growing and great signs and wonders was following. So did the persecution grow also. God uses the persecutions to exalt himself. The Bible tells us that as the apostles continued their work and mission, so did the persecution of the apostles beatings imprisonment and even death of the apostles became prominent but God uses all of that to exalt himself I hope you're following with me this morning the Bible tells us that the high priests and the Sadducees and the chief priests and all the council the people of the council they were filled with rage and indignation as the apostles had now gained um, influence and they were, people were being converted, people, were, people started to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe the teaching. And the Bible said that they became so enraged and filled with jealousy that they laid hands on them and threw them into the prison. But God has exalted himself. Oh my God. And so the Bible takes us to the night when they were placed in prison. And the Bible said that an angel of the Lord appeared and gave them a commandment. Go into the temple and stand and preach the word to the people. And the, the, the apostles were released from prison. God has exalted himself. I hope somebody is getting it this morning. Not only did the apostles obey, but they went with boldness and confidence. The Bible said that in the morning, the apostles found themselves back in the temple. Oh God. And they went in the temple and they started to teach the people. The councilmen and the high priests and all of these people gathered and they sent to get them because now it was time to cast judgment about their fate. The Bible said when they got to the prison, not only was the prison safely locked and secure, but the guards were still standing outside of the prison. And when they opened the prison, there was no one in it. God has exalted himself. The Bible said that immediately 
they became perplexed and confused because how could they have gotten out and the prison door was still safely shut and the guards were still standing in their position of authority and standing guard. God has exalted himself. They took the message back to the high priest. They are not there. We don't know what happened. We stood there all night, guarding. They never walked past us. We didn't see them. That door didn't open. God has exalted himself. And so they became perplexed. How are we going to explain this? Because God has proven once again that no weapon that is formed against his people will prosper. God has proven himself that he's the invincible, undefeated. He, he, he cannot be put down. God has exalted himself, believers. And the Bible said that there was one who came and told them they're in the temple teaching and they sent and they got them. My brothers and sisters, I want you to understand this morning that as you look at the scripture, God can show up in any situation. God can do just about anything. There are times when he shows up in the prison. There are times when he doesn't show up in the prison. There are times when he rescues. And there are times when it results in death like Stephen. But in all of it, God has exalted himself. Unlike us, God has no limits, no boundaries. God cannot be confined to a space. God cannot be confounded by your understanding. His love, his holiness, and his mercy, and all his other qualities are unlimited in their scope and expression. The invincibility of God renders our will and our strength powerless. It renders us powerless before him. And that's the God that we serve. God has exalted himself. God exalts himself in the good times and in the bad times. God exalts himself not to make us look good, but to bring glory to his name, O oh God Almighty. God has exalted himself because he is God and all glory belongs unto him. David declare in Psalm 70, he says, may all who seek you, Lord, rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation always say, let God be exalted. The Lord are exalted above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. In the scripture, the apostles were released and set loose from prison, not to go do their own thing, not to go hide, but to go do God's work. God has exalted himself. They were released from bondage to go do God's work. My word to you this morning, when God sets you free from something, it is for you and I to go do God's work because God has exalted himself. The angel of the Lord gave specific instructions. Today I ask you, what has God set you free from and why has he set you free? You pray for redemption, you pray for deliverance, you pray for God to break bondages and to break chains, but God doesn't break chains for us to go again and be entangled in the yoke of bondage. Paul declared in Galatians 5, in, in Galatians 5 verse 1, he said, stand therefore in the liberty where which Christ has made you free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. My brothers and sisters, when Christ has 
has set you and I free. It is because he has set us free to go proclaim something to those who are also in captivity. A lot of us have been freed from many things. We have been free from the prisons of the life that we have lived. We have been free from situations. But what have we done with that freedom? Have we taken it and run to declare who God is? Or have we found ourselves entangled once again in the yoke of bondage? God has exalted himself. The apostles were told, go stand, go back to the temple and declare the words of the Lord. And so if God has delivered you from something, why has he delivered you? What is the purpose? What is your next step? If when we look back and it seems as if, or it seems as though we are constantly seeking release, I want to ask you a very pertinent question. If God has been constantly releasing us and we consistently find ourselves in bondage, the question I want to ask us this morning, what have we done with the freedom we have received? Because when we come to a realization of how God has set us free, there is an instruction that follows with that freedom. There is an instruction that follows with that freedom. When the disciples have been released from any situation, God sent them to do something. My brothers and sisters, not only does God exalt himself in our prison situations, but he exalts himself in the presence of the enemies. Psalm 64, it says, let God arise and let the enemies be scattered. I can just imagine the astonishment of the guards when they could not explain what happened. I can just imagine my brothers and sisters, how they felt that they would have been put to death because they allow prisoners to escape. God does not set you and I free just for that, but to go and to do something to exalt him, to bring glory to his name. The Bible tells us that the enemy goes around seeking to devour who he will, seeking to devour who will allow him to. The Bible tells us that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And if we continue to find ourselves continuously being entrapped by the things of the enemy, then we will continue to be in the same situation day after day after day after day. Brothers and sisters, as you look at the scripture, the word the Lord has given, he has exalted himself. You have not been set free just to be set free and sit, just to be set free and go back, but you are set free because God has exalted himself in the presence of you and I and in the presence of our enemies. I want to share with you this morning the final thing. As these men were brought before the council, the most profound thing that we normally pick from the scripture, as they were brought before the council and the high priest said, did we not command you to not preach in the name of that man? And Peter and the apostle says, we ought to obey God rather than man. My brothers and sisters, I will say this if it means every Sunday and every day of our lives. One of the biggest challenge we have 
as children of God is a spirit of disobedience. One of our greatest challenge for you and I is a spirit of disobedience. The Bible tells us that disobedience is sin. The Bible tells us that every time we talk about disobedience, we use the word but. Or we talk about obedience, we use the word but. But Peter said we ought to obey God rather than man. God will exalt himself. As you sit and you listen, what instructions has God given to you that you have yet to be obedient to? What has God told you to do that you have not yet done? Do you rather to obey man than to obey God? The more we think, the more we think we know. The more knowledge we acquire, the more disobedient we get. There is a spirit of disobedience in the body of Christ. The church universal. And it is killing us daily because we are yet to obey God. Do you know what it is to obey God? It's simply put, to hear God's words and to act accordingly, full stop. There is no but, there is no if, there is no when. And so this morning, as I read the scripture, I want to encourage us, if I have to do it every Sunday, until we deal with the spirit of disobedience, we will suffer, we will feel pain unnecessarily, we will continuously be in the same situation because of the spirit of disobedience. The apostles were flogged, beaten, hated, persecuted, spoken about, cast in prison. Some of them didn't live to tell the tale, but they were obedient and God exalted himself. My brothers and sisters, I want us to understand that each day we come through this medium and each day we hear the word of God. What will you do with Jesus? We cry before God. We cry over the same things we find ourselves in. And God is saying, if you choose to obey my commands, then most of what you are facing, you don't have to face, all of us. But because we have a spirit of disobedience, because we know too much, we are too intellectual, we understand too much, and we take that knowledge and we exalt it over God. But I declare this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit that God has exalted himself. God will be exalted if we choose not to exalt him. I declare it today. Keep your praise. Keep your hallelujah. Keep your thank you, Jesus. But God will be exalted. He said, I am the I am. I am God all by myself. I need no one to make me God. I will build and I will pluck down. I will cast out and I will destroy because I am God. If you refuse to praise me and honor me, if you 
refuse to declare my righteousness and my holiness, I will still be God. And I will show you that I am God. I want to declare it this morning. That as we sit and we listen, whether you accept it, yes or no, God will be exalted. Whether you believe it, yes or no, God will be exalted. Whether you want to praise, yes or no, God will be exalted. He will be exalted in the earth. He will be exalted in the heaven. He has proven himself over and over again. And he will be exalted in the presence of the enemy. God will be exalted. He will exalt himself. He has exalted himself. He did not rescue you and I for us to sit and be quiet, but to declare who God is, to profess who God is. I challenge us this morning. I challenge us. God exalts himself in your prison experiences so you can go and do his work. God exalts himself in the presence of your enemies so you can go and do God's work. God exalts himself in every situation to show us that it is better to obey him than to obey man. Bow your heads with me in prayer. Father, we come to you this morning. Lord, I thank you. God, I thank you for all that you have done. God, we pray for the spirit of boldness. We pray for a confident spirit in you. God Almighty, we pray, God, that even as you have shown yourself and spoken your words, you need no approval from man. Mm. Mm. Whether we like it, yes or no. Whether we agree with it, yes or no. You have exalted yourself. Mm. Father, we bless you. God, and we thank you for this moment. That just as how you have released your apostles, as your words say in the scripture, and you command them to go back to where they were arrested and declare your words. There are many of us who have been set free, released from bondage, from our prison situations, but we are yet still have not followed your commands. There are many of us who suffer from the spirit of disobedience. God, we have become disobedient because we seek to glorify our own self. We seek to bring glory to our own lives. But God, you have exalted yourself. There are many of us, oh God, who are fearful of what the enemy is doing, going around seeking to devour and to destroy and to steal and to kill. But you have declared and shown in your scripture that you will exalt yourself in the presence of the enemy. So Lord, with us knowing that and seeing your work and what you are able and capable of doing, Father, we pray right now that you will remove the spirit of disobedience from, from our lives, every area of our lives. 
Some of us find our seats ourselves consistently in the same situations. Some of us find ourselves consistently in the same lifestyle. Oh God Almighty. And Father, you are calling us because you are not a God that is to be played with. You are a consuming fire. You are a God who deserves the best and only the best. You are the God who sits and speak and no one speak after you. Your yes is yes and your no is no. God, we declare you sovereign in this place. We declare, God, that you will break every chain in our lives right now. Break them, God. Help us not only to hear your words, but to plant them in our lives. Obedience doesn't follow with a comma or a conjunction. It's a full stop. Obey God and live. Obey God and act accordingly. If you love me, you said in your words, you will keep my commandments, full stop. There is no comma, there is no but. So God, teach us how to walk in obedience. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you thanks for your mercies, your loving kindness your grace, your faithfulness, your sovereignness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, I implore you, I encourage you, I encourage each and every one of us that we need to recognize that God will exalt himself in all things, in all places. God will exalt himself in your life in my life, on this earth, in the body of Christ, God will exalt himself. I encourage us, all of us, to walk in obedience, full stop. No conjunctions, no but, no if, no when. Walk in obedience. Make a declaration. I will pursue you and seek after you, God, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my body. And if I die while I do it, I perish. But you will be exalted. As we prepare to receive our offering, I'm going to ask Sister Dolores to come at this time as she receives our offering. Good morning. We would like to thank you for coming to worship with us here at Grant AME Church this morning. We wanna thank you for your offering, each and every one of you, for your offering, for your generosity in helping the church go forward. There are three ways in giving to the church if you do choose to do so. Uh, interact, e-transfer, email um, to giving at grant at gmail.com. You could go into our website, which is www.grantame.com, 
and click on the donate button. Or you could mail in or drop off in person at 2029 Gerard Street East, Toronto, Ontario. And the postal code is M4E2B3. We thank you once again for your generosity. <clears throat> so let us bow our heads in prayer and receive the offerings that we have received this day and for the week going forward. So our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Father, for your provisions. Your word says in Romans 8, 28, we know all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So we are thankful and grateful for your blessings. And as we go forward in providing for the church first, or church, Lord, to building your kingdom, we ask that you bless those who have given. And we ask that you bless the hearts of those who were not able to give. Your word says, give thanks in everything. Give thanks at all times. Thank you, Father, for your increase. All things come of thee, O Lord. Amen and amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Thank you, Sister Dolores. At this time, we're going to have a selection from Brother Jeremiah. Then we're going to have the announcements, and I'm going to ask Reverend Placido to do the benediction for us after the announcements. get to the announcements um i know you won't be able to speak but i know i think he's i know he's hearing us so i just want to say um we love you brother george i know you're hearing uh, but we love you we I want you to hear my voice we love you we love you we love you we love you and we are praying for you consistently amen amen you won't be able to speak but he's listening in 
And so I just wanted him to hear um, our voice so we can say, we love you, Brother George. At this time, we're gonna have the announcements um, by Sister Patience. Okay. Good afternoon, church. Um, here are your announcements for this week. This is a difficult time for most of us, so that we cannot fellowship as we used to. However, we can still commit to praying for our church and praying for each other. So join us in this week as we pray for our special requests and concerns. And these include Sister Vic Brooks Johnston and family on the unexpected passing away of her mother last Wednesday. Sister Dale Sparks and family on the loss of her brother. Sister Stephanie Brown, who is in need of special prayer. Sister Gloria Browning, who is recovering at home from a broken femur. Reverend Lester Willis and family. Sister Lorraine Downey, who is recovering from a broken ankle. Brother George Stephen and the Stephen family. Sister Luenda Joseph and family recovering from illness. Sister Kathy Hunt, Brother Ozzy and Jackie Roberts. Sister Doris Jones and Alder Arthur. Vernon Bird, Patricia Providence, Daisy Parrott, David King, Angie Chisholm, Carol Thibault, and Virginia Boyce. We also hold up prayers for our church. We pray for our leadership, for ministries in the church, for growth and membership, the conversion of new souls, spiritual growth, stewardship, our finances, and church growth. Prayer and fasting. Uh, prayer and fasting is enriching and uplifting. It unlocks and releases God's favor and divine will for us. God commands and instructs us to pray for one another and to pray together. Let us remember our day of corporate church fasting on Wednesdays between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Our hour of prayer. Please join us on the prayer line on Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. The dial-in number and the participant access code is included in the weekly announcements email. Uh, youth, uh, Sunday School. The Youth Sunday School is conducted every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Our youth continue to grow their talents, skills, gifts, and spiritual relationship with God. All youths are invited to join in the Zoom Sunday School classes. We have some upcoming events to look out for. Our youth will be presenting a virtual Black History Month presentation on the last Saturday of the month, February 27th, 2021. And we will also have a, a new membership class that will be conducted on Zoom in the month of February. And the series is titled The Journey from Membership to Discipleship. Church Bible Study. You're all invited to join our fun, engaging, and interactive Bible study sessions on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Time spent in Bible study is critical for all believers. This week in Bible study, we continue with our study series titled Being Called. Reverend Jolene Stokes and members from Saunders Memorial AME will be joining us for Bible study for the month of February. Everyone is welcome and encouraged to join using the church Zoom link. Grantful Food Bank. Please note that our food banks is classified as an essential service. So our food bank will remain in service on Wednesdays 
However, as of this Wednesday, February the 3rd, the food bank hours have changed from, was changed to 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you or anyone you know is in need of food, please reach out to us and we will help. No one should go hungry during this time. And that, that ends our announcements. Bless God. Thank you, Sister Patience. And so at this time, we're going to invite Reverend Placid to come and give us the closing. Um, then we can do it. If, if, I don't know if Sister Berta is still on. Um, okay, yes, yeah, she won't be able to speak. You won't be able to hear but you can just go ahead. He will hear you. So just, you can just go ahead and let him just send some love to brother George. Okay, go ahead, Reverend Pasi. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Kenesha. And uh, so I'm so very thankful for the great word of God. And God has exalted himself and he will continue to exalt himself as we are called to walk in obedience to God. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord to him and his face towards you and give you peace. And now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forever, and all the people of God say together, Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend. Let's see.